The RG351 Black on Black is a really nice portable device for under $100 coming preloaded with ROMs. It's cool. But a lot of people had an issue with it because it advertised PSP, Dreamcast, and Nintendo 64 performance being a, a one model up from the RG350, but it didn't quite deliver on those promises, especially for certain games. Well, in this video, I want to go ahead and grab this RG351 that Tom Top sent me, and I'm going to go ahead and update it to the new MU Elect Core, which gives you the new cores for Retro Arch, thus giving you some better performance and customization. And this is a really nice modification to do to your RG351. I'll start the video off showing you how to back up your existing files in case you ever want to go back, and then we'll get into doing the newer one. So Tom Top, a uh, e-commerce store, wanted to ask me if I wanted to check out the RG351, and I already checked it out, but there I was like, hey, if you're going to send me another one, go for it. I'll try a different color this time. This time it's black on black. And, uh, you know, these are coming out of China, and so there's a lot of these Chinese companies that sell these, and here's just another one. So I wanted to, you know, give them a shot. The shipping takes a little longer, but the price is right. So as you're following this tutorial, this is the stock micro SD card. I chose to just leave this, but I showed you how to back it up so you can have a backup of this. Um, and then the, here's my new micro SD card here. But you can remember just format this and be doing this off the 64 gigabyte SD card. The other thing is a lot of people recommend going for a name brand because these are not as good. They might not last as long. So going with an aftermarket SD card, well mine's definitely not gonna last very long, but um, going with a, a, a name brand is good. And all I was doing is I was putting in a little adapter and sticking it in my computer. And that's how I access all these files. So if you take the micro SD card out of your RG351, it's gonna look like this. You actually get two drives out of it. You get one, it'll call, be called MULEC in all caps. This is your operating system here. And then you have a separate drive, but really it's the same micro SD card called games. And you may have seen this before if you've hacked before, but this is a typical ROM structure. You got you know your BIOS files, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64. All these uh, folders represent different uh, systems. So what I might recommend is backing this up. For the games, it's really easy. You can just drag and drop all this stuff on somewhere. And then with the Emulec, you actually need to use Win32 to back this up if you want the original one. So you just go open up Win32. It's a free download. And uh, all I did was, so it's the H drive I want to back up. So I'll go H. And then uh, you want to pick a place to, to save it to. So I have my new folder here. Once you uh, decide on a name, just go ahead and hit this read button and it will go ahead and uh, turn your micro SD card into a .img file, which you can load up later if you choose to go back. You can see here that I backed mine up here, RG351 backup in case I wanna use it later. Another option is just go ahead and save this micro SD card and get a better one. And that's what I did for this tutorial is I got a 128 gigabyte micro SD card I'm going to uh, put in a new 128 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra drive. So for this tutorial, we will be using 351 Elec and right now they're on version 1.0.4. And um, I recommend doing the 64 bit version because that's going to allow you to use 64 bit uh, cores and things and it's it, it's the way to go. Um, but just check this out. This is why you're interested in this tutorial here. Uh, they corrected the rumble packs. They switched the default theme to art book. They set proper aspect ratios for, for most emulators. Um, the PSP uh, scaling packs, it was done to fix that. Um, the big one is multiple core updates. So um, with that, you're just going to get better performance, more customization, and you can play around with the emulators more to get them to run properly on this portable device. And look at this, just a lot of really nice um, fixes that are gonna make your RG351 even better. Now, um, as far as installing, I'm gonna be installing, I'm going from scratch. So I'm gonna want this file right here, 351-elect rg351p1.04.img.gz. Uh, GZ is a zip file, it's just compressed. So here it is here, I'll just click it and then download it. I should already have it downloaded, yep, here you go. So I have it and then what I did is I have seven zip, I went ahead and extracted it into its own folder and here is the image file. So this is what we're gonna be writing to our new micro SD card um, or you can use your old micro SD card that came with the RG351 if you want. So the first thing I like to do is format my, um, my SD card. I have a program called SD Formatter 
And uh, so I'll just run this really quick, um, especially because you might have a, um, and it doesn't matter what you call, you can even call this just boot. It doesn't matter what you call it, just format it. So it's fresh. That'll just take a second. After you're done formatting it, we're gonna go to a program called Win32. Both of these programs are free, um, so uh, don't pay for any of this stuff. All right, so at this point, we now, we wanna put it to our H drive, which is our micro SD card. My V drive is where my ROMs are, so I'm not gonna be, I definitely don't wanna click that. So um, we're just gonna go ahead and find this file we just downloaded. There we go, we extracted it. And we're gonna go ahead and just hit write. And then we're gonna write this new operating system onto our micro SD card. Writing a physical device can corrupt the device. That's fine. And I have a really fast micro SD card. Yours may take longer than this. Once this is done, we're just gonna eject it out of our computer and put it into our RG351. We have to do that before we can start adding ROMs because look, we don't have that games directory yet. We need to boot it up a single time to get it to uh, you know, change the partitions, and that'll allow us to add ROM. So I'm gonna go and press OK, OK, exit. I'm gonna eject it from my computer and put it into my RG351. Now, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and stick this back in. It's a little tricky, you gotta get like your fingernail in there, but these will, oh, goes like this. These will eventually click in. I got mine to click, then we're gonna boot it up. Watch this, it's really fast. The first boot up, you should see a green light in the upper right corner and uh, it's just gonna go through its little thing. It just vibrated. 351 emulect, it's saying it's making new partitions, and it's just gonna boot into a stock system with no ROMs, and uh, once this is up and running, all you have to do is load up your ROMs. You might wanna install a different version of RetroArch on it, but once your ROMs are there, it'll auto-detect your ROMs as long as you're using the right ROM uh, formats. But there it is, boom. You got settings and that. Remember, you can hit start and change your themes and do all sorts of stuff. Um, but it's just a blank image at this point. Settings and favorites, that's it. Um, but uh, now you have the new firmware on here. So you're rocking and rolling, pretty, pretty nice. So last step, we're just gonna turn it back off. Make sure that light turns off, okay. Then you can pull this out. I actually use the uh, micro SD the, to pull it out. Then we're gonna try put this back into our computer now that it now has the new firmware and it's gonna have that games directory and we can load up, drag and drop as many ROMs as you can fit on a micro SD card. You can put a 512 gigabyte in here, no problem. So now that I've booted up with the 351 MU elect, you can see it here, it actually calls it 351 elect. And then again, we get the games folder, but look, this time it populates it with all the different systems, even though there's still a lot of systems that aren't actually included on this. Now at this point, I could easily just go ahead and drag and drop. Um, what I did here is I actually backed it up, my games folder here, I backed it from my micro SD card. So here's all the original games and bezels and everything that was included with the RG351 stock. I could easily just copy those over if I still wanted these, just go ahead and you know drag and drop them here. That would give me all the games. Another thing is you can pick and choose. So for example, I have a big ROM collection here. You know, I have like all the PlayStation games. You know, I have all the Nintendo 64 games and you can find ROMs all over the internet. And basically you would just copy and paste it into the appropriate folder. So for N64, for example, I went ahead and transferred the entire collection. And as you see, I already have all 294 games on my E drive, my micro SD card. Now, because I have a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, look how much space I have. I still have 108 gigabytes of ROMs I can add. So that's one of the benefits of getting going with a larger micro SD card is I can literally, with 100 gigabytes, I could you know transfer over, let's see how big my PlayStation ROMs are here. Um, so I can, <laughs> I still have to pick and choose my PlayStation ROMs, um, but uh, you know I can copy over the entire Super Nintendo collection very easily. So that's all you got to do is um, transfer your games over via your computer, and it's drag and drop. So this is what it looks like once you drag and drop your ROMs. You still have your settings here: File Manager, Drastic, Install RetroArch, PSP, Upgrade Configs, and then you'll have your different depending on what ROMs you. Uh, transfer over, it'll just automatically populate. Like I downloaded all 294 Nintendo 64 games. I didn't transfer over my artwork, but here they are. And you can just, you know, go ahead and launch any game. 
You can even hit select and search for a game. Let's say my game is in S and then it'll jump you down to S. So pretty cool. And then all the functionality still works great. So I found Dreamcast performance way better. Uh, now with the newer Retro Arch and the cores, this is running Flycast, you can easily edit some of that stuff. Sorry for the shaky footage on this game. It gets better, don't worry. But uh, Dreamcast running really good. Next up you have Nintendo 64, Mario Kart. And uh, you're not gonna necessarily be able to play 007 perfectly, but a lot of the Nintendo 64 catalog will now be playable. And you can uh, mess around with this. Come on, Yoshi. I think you're so cool. Got him. So, um, this is running parallels, and you can easily try some other ones. Now, God of War on PSP, sorry, y'all. Even with frame skip, it's just not going to be able to run on this little device. But, like, a game like Ridge Racer 2, or some people are even saying, um, you know, like, Ratchet and Clank is running pretty good. And <clears throat> it is significantly better on the new firmware. So... Not only are you unlocking better performance, but you're gonna have a lot more customization and a lot more drag and drop. Now remember in this tutorial, I did not add any of the artwork <laughs> and I didn't add any additional themes. But once you add Emulec, I mean really, you're the, you know, the customization here is unlimited. You can change the themes, you can add new pictures, you can um, you know, add metadata, you can uh, make new collections, uh, you can change your default settings. You have a lot of options here um, to get it really working well. But as you can see with this tutorial here, once you have it set up, you have a now a drag and drop, which is really cool that you can just eject the SD card so easily now on this model and just have it come out. I want to go ahead and thank uh, Tom Top for you know providing me with this unit. And I decided rather than doing another review video, I'd go ahead and show you this firmware update because that was one of the biggest controversial things with this model was everyone advertises it as PSP, Dreamcast, N64, especially compared to the RG350. And with this firmware update, it really is showing more the capability of this rock chip that's in here. And a lot of people were skeptical and all pissed off that it was advertised as being so performance heavy, but not actually delivering on that promise. So with these firmware updates, and I know that when it gets better in the future as well, you're gonna see more and more performance. Now, Obviously, a cell phone, a newer cell phone is going to outperform this thing any day of the week. But I love the form factor. I love the screen. I love the weight. I love that it's a dedicated device. It still has a lot of pros for me. And then the price tag to boot, it's priced right. Now, the metal version might be coming out soon, but this plastic version is still awesome. And I can highly recommend it. But that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.